It's a me, I'm looking for. I was wondering when it would be the one. Right, so I'm going to talk about the Eddie and Four fight and kind of just what I thought of it. A lot of questions about the hatred between Eddie and Thor. Is it real? Is it fake? Is it put on? We know both of them very well, classing both as, as good friends. When we went down to see Eddie, the hate is or was very real. My first kind of year of doing UKs and Britain's Strongest Man, I was getting introduced to the likes of Eddie Hall and stuff, so competing with him for a long, long time. Since maybe about seven, eight years I've known Eddie Hall for. Recently, about the last three to four years, we've become close to being talking to him. You know, I've been down to his house to train for a week and stuff. And you know, he's always said that I'm gonna be the next big thing, etc. He's always kind of, you know, asked how I am. He always, you know, wants me to do the best. He always wants the best for me as well. So yeah, Eddie Hall's been, you know, great support for me and we've known each other for a long, long time now. Half four, I'm not knowing him as long. Obviously, when I was starting half, I wasn't doing Europe's strongest man, world's strongest man, so obviously Halfer doesn't do UK and Britain. So first proper time I met Halfer was 2017 or World Straws man, I think. Well, not really. I didn't really see him even there. I just saw glimpses of him. So yeah, so we got a good relationship going once. Iceman Strongest Man was on. I think it was four or five, four years ago maybe. I can't really remember exactly. But me and Luke went over a special guest and far for you know put us up in a hotel, gave us a car to drive around in. We went back to his house to chill out and stuff. So that was quite cool. Cause I only really knew far from competing and because I was kind of like a bit quiet and shy then I didn't only really said hi to him and how are you didn't I wasn't really in his company and stuff so it was nice to be able to kind of you know sit down with him and his wife and you know chill out for a few days when we we're over there so that was quite good and that's when again I started getting to know half or a bit more then we came a bit I wouldn't say closer but then at competition I would talk to him more he talked to me more and Eddie was you know the guy I knew more with I'm good friends of Eddie I you know, I follow him a lot, like I said, and I've known Eddie for a long, long time. Yeah, so that's the straw man side, and then the fight, I mean, the fight's two years in the making. You know, Eddie um, felt very betrayed. I don't know the right words, but, you know, after 2017, we'll see Eddie won it. Thor said what he did. Um, Eddie took that to heart, and, you know, looking back on it, you know, we all probably went through things, or was it fixed, was it fixed? And, of course, it wasn't fixed. It wasn't, there wasn't anything there, but... I think in the heat of the moment, and I'm guilty of that, you know, I've said things, stupid things when I'm emotional and, you know, I get angry and I say stuff that's not true and, and I think, you know, that's what happens to us all. We're only human and Eddie and Thor are both only human, but I think the, the hatred that they both have for each other has really worked well in the, you know, the fight hype, the, the press conferences, etc, etc. I think it kind of lost a lot of hype. Everyone was buzzing for it, you know, it was meant to be over in America and then for some reason it wasn't along around in America and it was meant to be somewhere else and it went to Dubai so I think it was New York, it was meant to be on LA, whatever it was in America, that would have been an unbelievable place to have the boxing fight, you know, loads of people there, such a big buzz in America, big fighters over there as well so that would have got a good uh, a good buzz for it as well, I was going to go over to that and obviously Eddie had his injury and then we didn't know when the fight was going to be, if the fight was going to happen, I kind of just, you know, I'm going to be honest, it's kind of lost interest in a wee bit. I was like, you know, it's a year's gone by and there's not even been any progress with it. A year and a half's gone by, still nothing. And then finally got a date two years later. And I was kind of, I wasn't really as hyped as I used to be for it. I wasn't really caring who kind of won in the end. I was just interested in my in straw man and watching that and kind of this fight was just kind of, for me, this was a piece of fun. They were saying that he was saying things that men should be saying things and then Thor was getting a bit mad and stuff, but like, it's boxing at the end of the day. You look at, at Conor McGregor and his press conferences to Mayweather and all oh, these guys, he disowns these guys like, and they're, like they're worth loads of money, they're top of the sport, but Conor McGregor comes in and rinses every single one of them. And I think that's what Eddie Hall is so good at, his mind games and stuff. I think he was just trying to break Thor mentally. He just said about the mum thing as well. He said, oh, you know, tell your mum to calm down. I mean, that's not, saying too much in that situation yeah four could be angry and stuff but that's just kind of if you're half four you shouldn't really have your parents there in my eyes you should have your coaches and people who are in your corner there only and you should keep your family away from that situation because eddie's going to obviously use that for fuel 
to help him in the press conference and to help get into Halford's head. It's boxing, it happens. You know, if I was in that situation and I seen, if I was up against somebody and they had their best friend there, I would use that as as bait for them. So it's far bit big time. And I mean, the press conference were interesting and kind of funny to watch some of them back and forth and stuff. And, you know, some of the stuff was put on the hype. There's a lot of hype, I think, as well around it all. They were trying to just hype the fight up. I think, like I said earlier, the, the fight had lost a lot of hype. So I think the press conferences and stuff were used to kind of get the fight, you know, hyped up again. Um, what do you think about Max being in the press conference? Having Eddie's kids are, you know, I mean, it's understandable. I mean, like I said earlier, maybe you should keep your family away from it, but Eddie had his, Four had his. You know, I think if Four said something about, I think Four did say something about Max or something, and uh, Max got a bit upset, but Eddie didn't, you know, retaliate because it's getting in your head, and, you know, Four could have said something about his wife, Eddie's brother, Eddie's dad, anyone there, right? Eddie said that about Four's mum because she was there, and if Alexandra went up to Four and said that, and then Four said something to Alexandra, I think Eddie wouldn't react to probably like that because it's just mind games at the end of the day, you know? I don't think families and that should be in those press kind of conferences and stuff, but. You know, especially coming from a strong man, the way you do interviews in strong man, it's not like, oh yeah, I'm gonna knock you out, I'm gonna do this to you, I'm gonna hate you, I'm gonna smash your best friend. It's it's a lot of learning curve for both. I mean, Eddie's, like I said, always is a big wind up merchant. He's always been on the mind game thing, so he knows a lot about that. But for four, it was new. But yeah, having Max, I mean, the Max is Eddie's kid at the end of the day, and you know he's wanting to protect him. I think he felt protected being beside his dad. So you know, fair play to Max, and I love Max. It's, the wee faces he was doing in the press conferences was so cool though he was laughing he was just trying to stir up a wee bit I think as well and he just thought it was funny and it's just a kid at the end of the day you know laughing at his dad like you always do so I loved that it was so cool seeing him and I like Max so big up Max and this isn't me downing them at all but it's not how I would do things I think the guys I mean saying that maybe if I hated someone as much as they hated each other maybe I would change to this monster and be calling everyone the names under the sun but I think it was really good for the the hype of the fight that that was real you know there wasn't any fakeness there for me I was so amazed by Thor's transformation the physique Thor had was insane you know he looks insane and he looked the part very impressive Eddie came in looking strong and solid and you know I know he's been cutting hard he's been training really hard you know the cardio that it takes to do boxing for six rounds the way they've they did is incredible so i mean hats off to them for you know for lasting the full six rounds or very elegant in his style i think you know he was very much the the boxer in, in that and you know eddie going against someone so much taller than him he had a couple of cuts to his eyes so i think he couldn't see so maybe he had to change his head position i'm not a boxing expert by any means i've never been boxing never done boxing never want to do boxing so don't ever ask me to do a boxing match because i'm not doing it yeah so let's go on to the fight i mean i mean let's first of all the live stream said 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 jeezy what are they called seggy seggy was rubbish i'm going to say that there you know i don't care what if that and anyway, when you have a thing like that and it's two years in the making that should be the first thing that you know if we make it so easy for the fans to click it it works and that's it but for that to not work after two years in the making was pretty disappointing at the start and when that didn't work i was kind of like right what's going to happen with this event because they said it was a sold out event and there was a lot of empty chairs as well so kind of before the fight even started i was kind of like right this might not be as good as i was thinking you know i was really excited to look for it and then after that kind of two things happened i was like it's, it was a bit embarrassing because it was buffering, it was stopping, we had to go into something else to watch it. And I think, you know, a boxing match of that stature should have been done via something else. And getting into the fight, you know, it was, I liked how they showed Eddie Hall backstage, for backstage, you know, the press conferences and that back and forth they had, it was all good. Who did you think was going to win? I might have, so first of all, I thought Eddie was going to win. Kind of studied their YouTube, so obviously, I seen for obviously, with that Billy Nelson. He was, I know him from a really good coach from Glasgow, Scottish. Never really seen Eddie's coach before, and I obviously seen Eddie was sparring some big guys. And then, you know, the reason I had Eddie at first is because I've seen Four go in the ring with uh, Devon, whatever he's called, the arm wrestling guy, and then some other guy. And that was an expedition match, and they weren't allowed to knock each other up. So I was like, it's not really, because, you know, he can't straighten his arms. Four was just, you know, kind of owning that kind of matches and I kind of thought it was set up for four to win that's not really showing for boxing and then Eddie's not showing really anyone boxing all Eddie kind of was really doing was pad work sparring hitting as hard as he could so it was kind of batting four but in the end I was like if Eddie doesn't knock him out in two rounds four has a good chance because it's like for me it's like Stroman if you put 100% into an, a lift and then try that six times 
by the time you get to your third, fourth, fifth, sixth time, you're gonna fail. So Eddie was giving 100% in every single punch he was doing, you know, pushing his body back like a slingshot and trying to connect. He connected a few times, but you see the first two rounds he was powerful, and then as the rounds got like third, fourth, fifth, sixth round, he was trying to get fatigued, he was missing shots, he was kind of just trying to, I think, tire four round by just doing the wee jabs that he was doing. So, and I've never seen that technique before either in boxing. Like, I've never seen anyone use the ropes and stuff. So I think Eddie was more trying to go for brute force, you know, which obviously works in straw man, but for this occasion didn't work in uh, the, the ring. And then uh, if you look at four, you know, four also hit Eddie down, but four was looking for the long game. You could see he wasn't rushing it. He wasn't going in to kind of do the big, massive left hooks, right hooks, uppercuts. You know, he had, in my he had so many opportunities to uppercut and that would have been knocked out because, you know, there was no guard there from Eddie. He said four was still on his feet after round two. He had cut Eddie's eyes. I think he kind of knew in his head that, right, if I see round bash, round three, not knocked out, he's won it and I think that's what it was like I think it was just if Eddie had connected with him or connected two big shots with him in the first two rounds four was done four had I think a long game plan and that was technique wins in boxing over brute force which you know it's true you can see that a lot um, see, as nice as Eddie hit him with his uh, left hook or what right hook whatever hand he would hit it with he would have knocked them out but like I said he fatigued and fatigued and kept fatiguing and uh, you know I think if that went on to like seven eight nine rounds like it was in proper boxing four could have then um, capitalise on that and maybe not Daddy out but I think it was great to watch because you know, honestly I didn't think it was going to go to six rounds I thought it was just going to be two guys hitting each other and just come out swinging one two rounds because the way Eddie came out he came out aggressively and I think he nearly knocked for what was it start the second round or something he connected with him I was like jeez he's down but these are both friends I was kind of thinking that if Eddie could get it done in the first one or two rounds um, if it didn't go over that then I think Eddie would have won that's what I was thinking. And I knew Eddie would be looking for the big punch, you know, looking for that big, big right hander to, to knock Thor out. And then looking at Thor, I thought Thor was, you know, just looking like a boxer. You know, he looked very skilled. So I, I didn't really know. I was to and fro in one minute I said Eddie, then I, you know, saw Thor's training and I said Thor and I was back and forth. So I was always kind of sitting on the fence. I found it hard because as, as strong men, generally speaking, we all support each other and we're a family. You know, that happened in the, the Arnolds when we were there. We supported Alexei, we would have done anything for Alexei Novikov. And it kind of took away from, from that aspect a little bit for me, you know, that family feeling. Because that's why I love strongman, that's why I love lifting with everyone. Because we generally have that support for each other, that that respect for each other, and I think that respect was lost a little bit. So, and again, that's not a, that's not me really bad mouthing anyone. It's just my opinion. And obviously, Eddie and Thor were strong men. They're not strong men anymore. So it's a tough one because I get why the the promoters still tout Eddie as a strong man, Thor as a strong man because it attracts a crowd. But with how they are, that's not how we are as strong men. You know, I get it's good for the hype. It's good for drama and bullshit like that but for me as a strong man we have to have respect first and foremost so for me i hope that the organizers and stuff they they let the actual strong man come through and take that kind of you know light now because i think it's you know like so tom myself and uh, martins alexi adam bishop graham hicks uh evan singleton trey mitchell all these great athletes are coming up through the ranks i think the light now should be shined on us and that should be it, you know, Eddie and Thor do their own thing. Obviously, they're always going to be legends of the sport. They always will be 100%. Eddie and Thor both deadlifted the most ever. Thor, when he was on the stones, it was incredible. Eddie pressing static power was absolutely insane. And that's always going to be the case. But there comes a moment or comes a time when it's like, right, we've kind of use them for, for everything we can, and maybe it's time to move on. But maybe it's not, I don't know. Maybe you guys love having all this hype, I don't know, I'm just kind of voicing my opinion, trying to be real with you guys. I, I found it really tough to watch, I did enjoy it, but just seeing two kind of guys I respect an awful lot, the way they've, you know, carved a career out of a strong man, that's something I admire, I respect, that's why we're doing what we're trying to do, and it was a tough one to watch because initially the first 30 seconds to a minute, I saw Eddie, Eddie was, I thought Eddie was going to knock Thor out initially. I thought it was going to, going to be over very quickly and Thor, you know, took a couple of big punches and... Fair play, Thor can take punches. I thought Thor wouldn't be able to take a punch as big as he did. He did and then I think after Thor taking that second punch, uh, second round punch at the start, 
he was in control after that, you know, I mean, he has a really good coach, Billy Nelson, who's, when you have a coach like that, that says, you know, trust the pros, process, you know, use technique, not power, you're going to do, obviously, Ford's a massive man, so, you know, obviously, coming from a strength background to boxing, you're kind of like, you're probably be thinking, I want to just, you know, use my strength, get my body around it and just, you know, hit him as hard as I can, but for use more of his body, got more of the wee muscles into it. His punches probably would have hurt more Eddie more than Eddie's punch because Eddie wasn't using his like his pivot, he wasn't using his hips to swing it, he was just kinda using his arms. So although he hit got for his punches, sorry, he, he got two cuts on Eddie's eyes. So yeah, it was a really good fight to watch. I like I said, thought it was fun. I was expecting a first, second round scrap or it would get stopped and they started fight fighting each other or something like that happen, but yeah, it was nice seeing Eddie's different approach to boxing and then for the way he kind of has improved over the two years, you know, like the way he's gone from 205 kilograms to that, the way Eddie's gone from 195 to that is impressive in itself. I don't know if they, they're both going to stick to boxing, you know, I think if they do, for could be on the right path of, you know, right now he's got really good technique, he cuts down a bit more, who knows, he could be going decent. I think Eddie Hall needs to kind of get into his to lose a bit of size I think you know when you have that nickname the beast you know you want to be the biggest guy in the room but obviously for boxing that's not you know the case that's not good to have so I think for Eddie to get a bit better he needs to really learn the technique and get a bit more looser on his feet you know a bit better on his coordination and stuff and then maybe lose a bit of uh, size and that'll you know help him as well that'll help him punch better you know like like for his nice punches his long levers his body just looks like a boxer's you know but anyway they both did good hopefully I think they're saying there might be a rematch so hopefully there is if there is a rematch hopefully you know there's not too much bad heat with them this time you know a lot of mouthing off a lot of things in the past that happened uh, hopefully that's behind them now it was a strange strange fight for me to watch but I'm happy for them that it's over you know I hope that they I know they've said about a rematch and stuff and if they do I hope it does come to the UK and we do give it the the limelight that it deserves because I think you know the Seggy TV and stuff, I think I just let it down a little bit, which was a shame. If it does happen, um, then so be it, but if not, I hope the guys can, you know, move on. What's happened in, in the past has happened and they've, you know, they've had a, a bit of a fisty cuff, they've had the boxing match. What's been said has been said. they both got beautiful families, you know, they've both got an amazing life that they love and they hopefully they can just enjoy that and um, I hope Thor has, you know, a perfect life in Iceland. I hope Eddie has a perfect life down in England because, like I say, I both respect them extremely, you know, an awful lot and that's all I want from them because I, when I class them as my friend, I just want them to be happy and I think if you're holding on to hate and anger and all this stuff, you can't truly be happy. So I think now, for me, uh, if they could, I don't know, let it all go and just become happy and become, you know, the, the great people that I'm sure they they are and they can keep being great, you know, because I think this is, this nastiness isn't, isn't good now, so hopefully that'll happen. If not, it's entertaining for us. They'll keep fighting, they'll keep scrapping, they'll do whatever, but we'll see what happens. Obviously Eddie Hall was wanting to knock Thor out, Thor was wanting to beat Eddie, they were wanting to beat each other as bad as each other and, you know, Thor's done it this time, but who knows if the rematch comes in. I really want it to be over in the UK, in a bigger venue in America, are you? Because, you know, in the UK, there's so many Strawman fans, there's so many Eddie fans, there's so many Four fans, and see so if you had that in an arena like Sheffield Arena, or in Leeds, or anywhere they do Strawman in the UK, that would sell out like mad, and having that 10, 15,000 people, you know, sh chanting Eddie or chanting Four would be unbelievable, and I think they would sell out good. So I think if they have a rematch, they need to get it over in the UK. You know, who cares about if the money's not as good, it's, they've had a big massive payday in this one, they both got loads of money in this one, you know, second one, just do it as a bit of fun, get a bit of money from it, and you know, Eddie takes re Eddie could get revenge, Thor could go and win it 2-0, you know, so, that's my thoughts, you know, it was good to watch it, I won't be in the boxing ring anytime soon, I'll stick to lifting weights and not doing any of those <laughs> press conferences like that, but anyway, it was good, you know, it was fun, it was something different to watch, like I said, it was nice to see the different, you know, reactions, the kind of, how Thor was going to approach it, how Eddie was going to approach it, how chilled out they kind of both were going into the ring as well. And yeah, it was just cool seeing the different styles of boxing. Like I said, I've never seen the, that style that Eddie's done before. Fair play to both of them for lasting the whole six rounds. I don't think they'll ever be friends. I think in 2017, the World's Strongest Man, Eddie won that fairly. 
for kind of was a baby about it you know i'm not that's basically what it is with a baby about it and flaunted uh eddie's eddie's kind of win you know and you should never do that in a competition you know if you're wrongly if you think you're wrongly thingied it discuss it with the referees and let the person win it you know have their glory and stuff it's not eddie's fault it's not any athlete's fault that four lost him breaking the rules clearly so um it could be a same with eddie eddie could Eddie lost to fourth, he could have not shook his hand, he could have went on Instagram, Facebook and said some excuses or said, ah, oh, blah, 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 I didn't have this and stuff, but, you know, he went on, shook it for his hand, uh, yeah, was a bit obviously angry and that that you lost, but he shook for his hand and uh, congratulated for, and then forgets about it, you know, that's it, you learn from what, why you lost, you learn from it and go away, it's not anybody else's fault you, you lost, but your own, so hopefully they, can be friends, but I think they might be a bit more civil now. There should be a bit of respect there. Not be as much respect from Eddie until he knocks Ford out, but let's see what happens. Hope you guys enjoyed that recap of the Eddie versus Ford boxing match. We will be back with training videos this week. Look out for them. Hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't agree with it, that's fine. 100% just me speaking. Again, thank you guys for all the support. If you did like this video, please don't forget to comment below, like the video, and if you haven't subscribed, please do because it means a lot. We are going to get back to training videos this week. We've been exceptionally busy. Some big, big news coming up that we'll maybe do a video about. A couple of big things. So stay tuned for that. Amazing stuff is going on. I can't believe it. So thank you for very much. Uh, the support also in the, the shirts, the merchandise. You guys are way too generous in what you buy from us. So thank you so much. We are waiting on a new website. It's almost finished. We're going to release that. We've got so many great athletes that are joining the merchandise um, line. So you can have a full collective of strong men and strong women. So stay tuned for that, guys. We will announce that. As always, stay safe, smile, and stay spicy. Please don't forget to ring that little bell. Ding-a-ling-a-ling-a-ling! -a -ling -a -ling. <laughs>